Hello BookTube. We're continuing on with my 2022 library tour, book by book, shelf by shelf. We started off here in the little book room and I'm slowly making my way around the periphery here. Uh, but at least I've got two feet planted firmly on the floor this time around. So we're going to do the next shelf in this tall, thin, custom-made bookshelf uh, from the middle, or the, right in the corner here. Uh, one of the tough decisions that I always have to make in a little book room like this when I'm making it is that there's no way to work the corners. There's no way to do that. You have to just give up that space. So when you've got a corner, you know, a right angle corner like that, your natural urge is going to be to put a bookcase all the way in and then a bookcase all the way in and sacrifice a few inches of space that you can't get into. And I've actually done that in various iterations of this room. But really the way to do it is to take a narrow bookcase and just put it directly across that right angle. <laughs> just put it right there and just sacrifice that little triangle of space behind it because that way you get all your shelves <laughs> and it also looks nicer. Uh, so we're going to do the Transwise books first here and the first one is something we just saw on this channel. I just found it at the Brattle just recently. It's this lovely uh, marble page uh, edition of John Dryden. It's, it's uh, double columned. Got all of his verse and all of his translations. Just a wonderful, wonderful volume. Uh, it was falling apart and I didn't know of any way to fix it. And then I noticed that I could find uh, that I actually had a plastic covering for it. That will help at least a little. Uh, I still have to be fairly careful with it until I can have it rebound in Cambridge across the river. I know just the person to do it. I just, it's, it's a special trip. It's a special errand. I don't have any errands to take me over across the river to Cambridge anymore. So. <sighs> I'll get to it eventually, and he'll appreciate the work. Uh, then we have a big, fat, immersive novel. This is Sacred Games by Vikram Chandra. I have had this in many different editions. It has a very ugly American trade paperback. And I also had it as an advanced copy, a big, fat uh, ARC. And also at one point in, uh, in its history, I had this book originally was issued as a, a normal ARC, but also it was issued as a box of little ARCs. It's a very long book. Uh, so the reader, the review copies, it, it, one set of the review copies was a set of boxed little sections of the book. I think six of them. Uh, and I had that at one point as well. But this is the nicest one. Just uh, flush red, the embossed letters, the deckled edges there. This is a huge, sprawling novel that uh, basically is about the contest of wills between two men who are more alike than they want to admit. A, a crime boss and a cop in India. And it's just incredible. It's just amazing. Uh, I wonder if this uh, if this is a UK edition. Uh, well, anyway, uh, it's it's uh, a great book. I wish I, I'm I'm always on the edge of committing to rereading this. It would work for. March of the Mammoths, I believe. Yeah, 916 pages long with the glossary. Uh, it's a great portrait of those two men. It's tons and tons of great so secondary characters. It's a, a great portrait of uh, Mumbai, of Bombay. Just a, just a terrific, immersive book. The author has never done anything quite like it before or since. Uh, then what else have we got here? Uh, okay, all right. Well, I'm seeing a theme here. Uh, this next one is Space by James Mishner. A big immersive novel <laughs> this time about the uh, partially about the the uh, quest for humankind to go into space specifically the Apollo missions of NASA and this also count as a uh, March of the Mammoths no uh, 19 or six 620 pages in the American edition I've had mass market paperbacks of this before and I think I had a, one of those newer edition trade paperbacks but this is this is what I prefer it's a it's a, a missioner that I revisit I don't revisit all of them, but it's one that I revisit. Uh, then we have a gigantic immersive novel. <laughs> this is, uh, was this also March of the Mammoths? No, 742 pages. This is uh, Carlene Cohn. This is Through a Glass Darkly. A gigantic, sprawling, uh, historical romance, multi-generational, multi lots and lots of uh, hard truths. This is not a, a plush and escapist fantasy, not completely. Uh, a big, sprawling book. I guess that's the theme of the shelf, because the next one is was the definition of a big, sprawling romance novel for an entire generation of readers. This is MMK's The Far Pavilions. Another sprawling thing. This has got to be uh, March of the Mammoth territory. It absolutely has to be. Uh, 
uh, yeah, 954 pages. Uh, it, I, this was the cover that I fell in love with. This was the mass market cover. But the mass market paperback of this, I would probably grab it if I saw it. I've had it many, many times. I'd probably grab it just by reflex if I saw it, but it really is too big to read in mass market. Although this thing is pretty unwieldy as it is. It, all of these things are uh, good candidates for ebooks. Uh, with a big immersive book like that, the one worry that I had about ebooks is that you wouldn't be immersed in it. That that quality of immersion would go away with ebooks, and it doesn't. For me, anyway, it doesn't go away. Uh, so I really need an ebook of all of these things. <laughs> and then the last one here, also a gigantic immersive novel, is this also uh, March of the Mammoth Territory? Uh, 684, close enough. <laughs> close enough for government work. This is an instance of the finger post. A uh, very long historical murder mystery set right at the very groping dawn of anything like modern medical science or med modern forensic science. Told from four radically different points of view by four different narrators of the same events, each one of whom is unreliable in their own way. Uh, which makes it a fascinating reading experience, infinitely revisitable. But then again, all of these things are infinitely revisible to me. Uh, I should revisit this. I read this, I reread this uh, for March of the Mammoths, I think three years ago, something like that, and really enjoyed it. And even then, even when I was, I read it when it first came out, uh, which was 1990s sometime, I'm thinking, 1998. Uh, and I, even when I was rereading it for March of the Mammoths, I was thinking, you know, this will stand an, another read down the line this will actually stand another read that's how how multi-layered this thing is never found anything like that kind of a reading experience in anything else that this author has ever written uh and there you go so a quick library tour for today but a themed one <laughs> a themed library tour big fat novels um i'm okay with that i don't know what they're all doing all collected here it's very odd. Usually this room doesn't show any kind of organization like that, but I'm sure we'll be back to chaos next time. <laughs> so I'll, I'll wrap this up for now, and I'll see you then. Thank you, Booktube.